everybody real quickly. I'm just going to make a very fast video to catch everybody up on what they missed for chapter three. We had so many tech issues and it, this is, we're just throwing this together. This is not going to be a super quality video. I apologize, but I was more concerned about that. I didn't have it out. So we're back in James and we're going to go to chapter one, which I have right here. Starting with verse one, my brethren, be not many masters, knowing that we shall receive the greater condemnation. So masters back then was a teacher. We kind of think slavery, you know, when we hear the word master, but back then it would have been teacher. And what he's saying here is be not many teachers. Be, don't have too many people be teaching the word of God, teaching the Christian life uh, learning in the spiritual matters. This is about teachers of spiritual matters. And notice he's including himself again. My brethren, I'm on the same level as you. Um, and then he says later, knowing that we, because he, he is a teacher of spiritual matters, and he's including himself. We're going to receive the greater condemnation. So Bible teachers, Bible teachers will be more accountable to God. They, they will have more accountability, which has been, you know, uh, making me pretty nervous for months now. <laughs> when I started studying this at the beginning of the year a lot, I was like, what? But it is serious. It is serious. That's why um, it really, if if you see someone preaching online or teaching, because I'm not preaching, um, and they're, it's all about them, then just know that that's not a true teacher of spiritual matters. And they're going to have to answer to God for that. But um, so just know that this is what it means. So if you're taking on a Sunday school class, um, anything of a spiritual matter, we do need to take it seriously. And I think of times in my past when maybe I did not take it as seriously as I should have. So there we go. Here's a good scripture there. Now on two, for in many things we offend all. If any man offend not in word, the same is a perfect man and able also to bridle the whole body. All right. Now remember offend here now is not quite like today. I'm so offended at that her post on Facebook. No, it's not that. It's meaning cause one to stumble, to make a mistake. Okay. If you're able to not make a mistake and be a problem for someone else, someone else with your words, then that's great. Because that means you're able to control your whole body, keep it in check. Because what it tells us in verse three, behold, we put bits in the horse's mouth that they may obey us. And we turn about their whole body. He's so he's saying, look, we use, we use a bit in the horse's mouth and we control the whole horse. So if you can control your mouth, you should be able to control everything else. And why is it such a great feat to a great accomplishment to control your mouth? Because what it tells us later, look through here, verse four, behold also the ships, which though they be so great, and are driven of fierce winds, yet are they turned about with a very small helm, whithersoever the governor listeth. Okay, now I had to do some word study on this one because some of these words are not quite how we use them as, uh, today. Okay, so whithersoever, that's like where, wherever, okay? But the governor is actually was a steersman, a helmsman of a ship, and listeth is a violent motion, an impulse. I was thinking kind of just floating off casually, but it's like he purposely is going to steer the ship in this manner. Now, we need to remember that the rudder of the ship, yes, it is very effective, very efficient, but it only does what the helmsman allows it to do, what it tells it, what he tells it to do. So, my thinking of that is our mouths should only do what we allow them to do. Don't take this scripture and say, see, look here, people's speech, 
can be a really big problem. And that's why my speech is just a really big problem. No, that doesn't give you an excuse to just have free fall of the mouth. No, it means that we can make a concerted effort, concentrated effort, and focus and make sure our words, our mouths are not doing harm, okay? Because look what it says and we're gonna do five and six together. Even so the tongue is a little member and boasteth great things. Behold how great a member a little fire kindleth. And the tongue is a fire, a world of inequity. So is the tongue among our members that it defileth the whole body and setteth on fire the course of nature, and it is set on fire of hell. Okay, we all know that a single spark can start a fire. Coming up, we're very, you know, if you live in Utah, you know that fireworks are the thing in the summer, and we've had a very dry year. I'm actually pretty nervous about, um, well, I'm not like sitting here going like this, but I'm concerned about the fireworks because a single spark can start a huge fire. Now, when it says a world of inequity, that's a, the world of unrighteousness, the member, the little member, he's talking about a part of the body, defileth the whole body. That's what, um, that is a, that is huge because then it, it's like saying this, that what we say with our little mouth, or maybe so big, can destroy our testimony, the rest of our testimony. Course of nature, that's like the wheel of life, human origin. Um, and you know that we have a sin nature. We gotta be careful of our nature. Now, I think James may be referring to our sin nature here, but I'm not 100% sure on that. So remember, because of the garden, of what happened there, we are born with a sin nature. Now let's go on to set on, set on means ignited, fire of hell. Now that is like the total powers of darkness whose final place will be hell. Satan is not really just hanging out in hell right now. He's been allowed to be here. See, he's prince of the world right now, but he's going to end up there. So we have hell, it's something that we have really, um, we use just far too casually. Uh, we'll say things like, oh, that test was from hell. Um, I'm sorry if I'm offending anybody. I'm just telling you how we talk. Uh, we, it's in, it's in our culture to use hell very, very um, casually. But we need to remember that it's a very serious thing. It's a very real thing. And it is 100% going to be the place where Satan is. So it's going to be 100% of darkness. It's going to be the place of dark. You, we don't want anything associated with that. We shouldn't want anything associated with that at all. All right. So we're going to scroll up. Remember also with his mouth, well, he said it in his head, but you know, Satan's thoughts while he was still Lucifer in heaven, he was like, I'm going to make myself more high than God or like us high. And that that pride and him expressing those thoughts, uh, he uh, got kicked out of heaven there. If you want to read more about Satan um, being kicked out of heaven, you can look in Revelation chapter 12, verse 9. Um, and also think about um, what do we let our mouths do you know do we do we control it or do we like just actually fuel it let it keep going proverbs twenty six twenty says where no wood is there the fire goeth out so where there is no tail bearer the strife ceases ceases stop stop sorry i can't talk today so it's saying if you don't give fuel to a fire it goes out and when there's no one around being a tail bearer, telling stories, telling lies, causing trouble, there's no more strife. Easy doing. So we think about gossip. We think, oh, no one's getting hurt. Yeah, they are. 
And if we stop, you know, um, if you if you stop that conversation, it can't go anywhere. So we have a we have a responsibility at, to not gossip with our mouth, but on the other side, stop gossip when it's being given to you. Not always easy, and people get offended. I wasn't meaning anything by it, or even better, I'll say, "Well, I meant it as like you know." prayer request pray for them no that was gossip don't be saying it was a prayer request I cried to you. okay i mean they're cracking me up but you know what i'm saying okay let's go to verse seven for every kind of beast and of birds and of serpents and of things in the sea is tamed and hath been tamed of mankind i'm going to go ahead to eight but the tongue can no man tame it is an unruly evil full of deadly poison so it's not just evil it's unruly evil it's like a double whammy, okay? Uh, it's really, really bad. So what we're talking about here, we, we, we domesticate animals. We, we train them to do things. We train them to work for us. Yet we can't train our own mouth. You know, this, this speaks home, you know, because uh, a lot of us, me, we get our mouths get us in trouble. So how, but then, it, but it says in verse eight, but no man can tame the tongue. So then we're thinking, well, so you set us up for failure. No, because the Holy Spirit, call on the Holy Spirit, use the Holy Spirit, be willing to allow the Holy Spirit to fill you and let the Holy Spirit control your tongue. Spending time in his word is one way to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Um, pray. Avoid engaging in something that you know you have a history of getting in trouble with your mouth. Gossiping, if you see that it's only really when you're with certain friends, be more on guard around those certain friends. Uh, that's just one thing, one little example. Why is it so important that we control our mouth? Because verse nine, Therewith bless we God, even the Father, and therewith curse we men, which are made after the similitude of God. Verse 10, out of the same mouth proceedeth blessing and cursing. My brethren, these things ought not to, so to be. In class, we talked about that old saying that we used to say, you kiss your mother with that mouth, you kiss your mama with that mouth, if people were cursing and stuff. And I, I changed it to, you're going to worship God with that mouth? You just done cussed out people or griped about them or gossiped about them. And those people that you've been cussing out or being angry with, they were made in the image of God just like you were. Okay? He's saying, yeah, well, there's some people that annoy you, but you shouldn't be, we shouldn't be letting that be a reason to let our mouth just run freely and not be um, under control. Out of the same mouth proceedeth blessing and cursing. Hmm. So that's a good test for ourselves to check. Think about your language, even thoughts, you know, and think about, you know, am I doing more, uh, blessing or am i more on the cursing side now maybe you're not sitting there swearing up a storm but you know you're using your mouth to complain you're using your mouth to be not for the lord um but, so we have to personally check ourselves because it, it really is an indication of maybe what's going on in your heart Sometimes a word will slip out. Maybe some bad language will slip out because in your past, you cussed a lot and it's still just kind of in your memory patterns there. I think people understand that. And I mean, I know I do. And most people are not gonna be offended. And okay, brother, I'll pray for you. I know that's hard. Just don't make it an excuse though. Oh, bleepity bleep. Oh, you know, I used to have a really bad past. So sometimes I still cuss. <laughs> okay, well, that's a, that can be a reason, but you can't make it an excuse, okay? The more space you give the Holy Spirit in here, the easier this should be, okay? The easier it should be. Now let's go into 11 and 12. Death of fountains send forth at the same place sweet water and bitter. Can the fig tree, my brethren, bear olive berries, either a vine, figs? So can no fountain both yield salt water and fresh? 
And this is just a great analogy that James is using, a very clear example for everybody to understand. This is very clear. You can't be having both, okay? You can't be having the both. It also, it's an evidence of our faith. Not a checklist to say, look at this, I do, I speak good words, so I must be a Christian. No, it's you're a Christian and your faith should be growing. Do the checklist to see does your faith mouth match the faith you say you have? You should know them by their fruits. Matthew and chapter seven, he's of course warning them about uh, false teachers, but he's saying you shall know them by their fruits, okay? People should know us by our fruits. They should know us by our fruits. Okay. Now let's go on to 13. Who is a wise man and endued with knowledge among you? Let him show out of a good conversation his works with meekness of wisdom. All right. Endued with knowledge. That's intelligent experience. It's more of the wisdom side. We know, I'm sure every one of you knows somebody that's very smart, but you wouldn't really call them wise. And you don't really have them, they don't have all the experience maybe that they need, even though they're really smart. Okay. Um, then conversation here is not, it's not this, but it's his manner of life, his conduct and this behavior. And we in class discussed how this is, yes, about our mouths, but also what we can put on social media, you know, maybe be a little more careful with that. Um, as for the, out of the same mouth proceedeth blessing and cursing. Um, and I'm sure I've got posts in the past where I probably am not filled with the Holy Spirit and did more of the cursing side. I mean, I wasn't cussing, but you know what I'm saying? I wasn't doing the blessing. Uh, but think about this. Maybe you like something, a little meme or something that some uh, page has created. And so you share it on your post without checking. Maybe the original post has like horrible language in it or, or even the Facebook page name, like the I F N love, was it math or science? I can't stand that. So you've got that big F word there on your profile now on your page. Now, maybe you think, well, they won't really look at that. But if you know that's what the world, you know, if you know that, for example, for me, this is my personal conviction. If I put OMG, maybe I mean, oh, my golly, oh, my gosh. But I'm scared the world is not going to think that. And they're going to think I'm saying, oh, my God, which is taking the Lord's name in vain, which I don't want to do. Again, this is a personal conviction. Or if you put some of the phrases on there. Um knowing that what certain abbreviations mean, even though I might mean something else like um, WTF, we all know what that means. So even if I might mean something else, I'm not gonna put it on my social media because the world's gonna see it and think the one that most people know about. All right, now in verse 14, but if ye have bitter envying and strife in your hearts, glory not, and lie not against the truth. Okay, so, you know, don't be boasting. Don't be boasting about it. You got, you, you've got anger, envying, and strife in your heart. In our class, we had a good discussion about this. Strife is going to be all around us, okay? We live in this world. We're not of this world, but strife is all around us. Some people bring it to your door, but there's a difference between you being in strife among it than you having strife in your heart. And I think you'll know it because you, you will not be at peace. If you've got strife in your heart, you're not going to be at peace. You're not. I think there's going to be other things that the Lord's saying, hey, you got something in your heart there you need to get rid of. But that's different than being, I have peace in my heart, but and you probably do too. And yet we're in, maybe we're in a conversation with friends that is very very not good, very hateful, or very confronting or anything. So we talked about that in class a little bit to differ differentiate. Then verse 15, this when wisdom descendeth not from above, but is earthly, sensual, and devilish. 
this verse is so today for me. There's so many people claiming wisdom, declaring themselves Bible scholars, declaring themselves anything. And, um, but, but make sure your wisdom is coming from God. Okay. It's really easy. I know I haven't always been that way. And then when I read this verse and I'm like, what? That means I was being the opposite of God. Earthly, sensual, devilish. That's the opposite of devilish. I think as I'm getting older, I'm, I'm seeing more and more of how there's just no sliding scale. You're either with God or you're not. Okay. That's just me, my little, my own journey here. And then verse 16, for where envying and strife is, there's confusion and every evil work. We take evil, we use, it's also another word we use casually. It's wicked, wicked. And yeah, I love the musical from Broadway too, wicked, but you know what I'm saying? Wicked, the exact opposite of God, okay? Confusion, it says there is confusion, um, like instability, disorder, chaos, and it's wicked. Why do we want to be there? Why do we want to be in an evil place, a confusing, chaotic place? Because we like drama? Mm, maybe. So I have to check myself on that one too. Verse 17. Oops, I forgot to make a point of... all time. I know what I was going to say. I'm sorry. Okay. So back to wisdom. If any wisdom that I have, it should point people to God, not to me. It should point people to God's word, not away from it. It should point people to God. There you go. Now on, um, I think I use strife as also a gauge in my life. Um, if, and I can tell it by a lot of times it'll come out in my, I'll, I'll do this. I'll have this nervous habit when I'm having a lot of conflict or some stress or some strife. And that's a little gauge for me. Um, if I'm wanting to use my wisdom Show somebody else how they are wrong. He or she is wrong. Then I've just made it more about me. And that is not humble. Now it's not, it's okay to tell someone he or she is wrong in, in accordance to God's word by stating what the Bible says, but be kind doing it. Don't get in an argument over it. Just don't, you know, be kind. And um, don't resort to sarcasm and some other things uh, that I just, that doesn't point people to God. 17, but the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, and easy to be entreated, full of mercy and good fruits without partiality and without hypocrisy. Let's break down some of those words because I know if we use them as today, but um, so it's going to be like when it says easy to be entreated, that's like easy to obey, easy to reason without partiality. That's certain. It is certain. There is no uncertainty about it. And um, of course, hypocrisy we know is without being fake. We don't want to be play acting. So um, how can we have this godly wisdom? Because it's so peaceful. It's so great. By what we're going to learn in chapter four here in just a second. Well, tonight we start, well, we've already started it, but you'll learn, we're going to be learning more about that in chapter four, drawing nearer to God. Um, but just think about the difference when here he's talking about earthly wisdom is there's bitterness, there's envying, there's strife confusion, wickedness. But over here in Godly's wisdom, it's, it's pure. 
it's peaceable, it's gentle, easy to be entreated, full of mercy and good fruits and without partiality, and without hypocrisy. The gentle word just brings out to me because you can stand firm about what the word of God says and you can do it in the most peaceable, gentle way. But if the other person is not liking what they hear you say, they may react with anger and they may accuse you of not being gentle, of speaking the truth in a self-righteous way, in a narrow-minded way. Just remember that they're struggling with conflict. They're, maybe they're very convicted by the word of God. Just pray for them. There's really no point, in my opinion, to just sit there and just keep at it. And run, run, run. Because seriously, then it's just become about me trying to win an argument. And that does not point anybody to the Lord. So disengage, not totally, because we live in this world. Hello. But step back if you can and just continue to love that person and pray for that person. You may have to actually... Um, depending on the situation in your life, you may have to break contact for a little while with that person. It does not mean stop praying for them. This is stuff I'm, you know, yelling at myself about, telling myself about this is not something me, you know, preaching and shoving down your throat. <laughs> but um, so chapter three is ended by 18. And the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace of them that make peace. Again, the opposite of strife and chaos, just peace, peace, very nice. The result of righteousness is sown, that's what it's saying, the refruit is like a result, and it's planted in peace of them that make peace. God's wisdom leads to righteousness. Notice it doesn't say, I'm not saying self-righteousness, huge difference. God's wisdom leads to righteousness, which will lead to being a peacemaker. Okay, and think about in Isaiah in the Old Testament, chapter 32, verse 17 says, and the work of righteousness shall be peace, not bickering on social media, shall be peace, and the effect of righteousness, quietness, and assurance forever. Ooh, I like Again, I'm not saying these things because I've got these down and I'm a pro. This is my journey, and this is what I'm doing, and I just wanted to share it with you. I hope you can keep joining us and hopefully we'll stop having technical issues. But if we do, I know where it's coming from. Some of it's my error, but some of it's spiritual warfare. It's plain and simple. You guys pray up, stay suited up. See you next time. Mm -hmm.